The thing that compels my attention and always surprises me is that when we read scripture together, people begin talking about the things that are most elemental in their lives, that are most important. Talking with an honesty and a depth Scripture somehow provides a meeting ground and, and maybe even a ground in which trust can grow amongst us. One of the advantages that Episcopalians have in reading Scripture is that we are accustomed to hearing it in the context of the liturgy. The liturgy is a poem that speaks to us in the first instance in an imaginative way. We are hearing and saying the words of scripture in recombination. When we speak of the Bible, we're talking about some 66 books that were written over a period of a thousand years, a little bit more than that, in the Eastern Mediterranean that we now call Turkey, Israel, Palestine. But when we talk about scripture, we're looking at the same literature from a different perspective. To say that the Bible is scripture means we're looking at it with the conviction that in some way it speaks to us about what it is to be human, about our life before God. As sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all, to speak of scripture is to make a claim that's not really objectively provable. This is a true representation of what it is to be human, or that this is a true representation of what God is like. But the church has experienced over centuries and millennia that to speak of the Bible as scripture is a self-authenticating statement. As people who participate in the liturgy, we already are using the words of Scripture ourselves because they say that the Book of Common Prayer is 90% Scripture. It invites us to become engaged not simply through our rationalistic thought processes, but to let our hearts become involved in what we are hearing and saying. Another advantage that Episcopalians have is that we are connected in our Christian lives with Anglicans all over the world. Go to Go to evil. We say yes to goodness. Yeah. That should have a bearing on how we read scripture. Because we have sisters and brothers with whom we share those scriptures, with whom we share our prayers. My primary work in the last 10 years, specifically as an Episcopalian or a member of the Anglican Communion, has been working with the Episcopal Church of Sudan. I've worked with women and men, and our work together has been reading scripture and hearing how it speaks to them in the context of a very difficult political situation. It has changed my way of reading scripture because I have seen the extent to which contemporary Christians 
can hear scripture as the living word of God that speaks directly to their experience and offers them guidance. So I've learned a great deal about how the people of the biblical world looked at their larger world through talking to African Christians. For example, there's a line in Psalm 126, those who go out weeping, carrying the seed for sowing, will return with shouts of joy, shouldering their sheaves. I didn't really understand for many years why someone would go out weeping to sow the seed in their field. Until I began working with African Christians who have to make a choice between eating the grain now, giving it to their hungry children, or planting it in the field so there'll be something to eat next year. And so those kinds of elemental questions need to be part of what we bring to Scripture. Perhaps what the Bible does best is surprise us and sort of blow the ceiling off reality as we have come to think of it. The Bible is always pushing against and sometimes exploding what we think of as the limits of our experience and telling us that there is much more that is possible if we'll only open our eyes and our hearts to that possibility. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.